Firstly, addressing the elephant in the room. Serverless does involve servers. There'll be servers involved in the running of serverless from the viewpoint of the serverless provider. But it's a big difference in that this is someone else's server if you're actually using a public cloud provider. We don't need to worry about managing or maintaining systems. The provider is essentially enabling resources as required, on demand, and in turn, they look after the servers and services involved in running a serverless offering. This is great as it removes the burden involved with server maintenance and cost deprecation. There's also no need to worry about the choice of infrastructure used, so the number of cores, the amount of memory, networking, connectivity, storage, or even the operating system and patching that operating system. Typically, we're interacting directly with the serverless offering via code or the likes of container images. To understand what serverless is, let's take a look at one of the more common serverless providers, AWS Lambda. Lambda falls into the category of FAS, function as a service. With AWS Lambda, as I mentioned, you can quite simply upload your code as a zip file or a container image. If we bring up the AWS Lambda page, this bit here is important. Automatically respond to code execution requests at any scale from a dozen events per day to hundreds of thousands per second. There's two important aspects to take away from this. Firstly, serverless is an event-driven architecture, i.e. it runs in response to events, and therefore you would typically be billed as and when code runs for the resources that were utilized during that execution. The second point was at any scale. Recall where we talked about autoscaling. With serverless, autoscaling is a core component for serverless offerings. Typically, autoscaling would refer to one or more instances. In the serverless model, as we're using an event-driven architecture, it is standard to consider this as scale to zero. You don't have to worry about autoscaling from a setup or configuration viewpoint as this is built in, but you do need to consider from a cost viewpoint and ensure that there are limit or budget thresholds so that you can manage your workload and billing accordingly. If we go back to the Lambda overview on the third box, this is covered here where it talks about savings and costs. Lastly, it mentions on the right provision concurrency. A lot of these serverless offerings automatically handle concurrency as part of their offering. Therefore, reducing the overhead and difficulties of this from a self-managed application or infrastructure viewpoint. In the cloud native ecosystem, Knative and OpenFAS are open source solutions that provide serverless functionality, i.e. FAS, function as a service on top of Kubernetes. To give an example of this, we could, for example, run a serverless web application on top of Kubernetes. When this runs, we could have this automatically create a load balancer that configures a minimum number of pods. When this application is not used, it can automatically scale down, and as the application is accessed, Knative could automatically scale the application backup. From a cloud native viewpoint, serverless can pose a variety of challenges. Many cloud providers, for example, run proprietary solutions as their serverless offerings, and there may not be standardized APIs for accessing the service. The cloud event specification was established to provide a consistent way of describing event data in common formats, therefore providing interoperability across services, platforms, and systems. It's hosted by the CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. There's SDKs in most major languages and there's coverage for common protocols. Definitely take some time to read through the Cloud Events specification. I hope you enjoyed this video. Whilst there's a lot of theory in this topic, it is highly prevalent in the KCNA exam. So do some extra study and research on these areas. I'll see you in the next video.